Um, but hello everyone and welcome to today's MinMD Real Talk webinar, Injection Therapy Online Clinic. My name is Austin Hunt and I'll be your moderator for this event. I work on the marketing team here at MinMD and I'm excited to be hosting this session today. Before we get started, we have a short disclaimer that we need to review. The health and medical information provided during this webinar, as well as the questions and responses from the webinar providers, are solely for informational purposes. This content is not intended to take the place of advice or treatment from health professionals. Nothing presented in the webinar is intended to be used for medical evaluation, diagnosis, or treatment. It is not intended to substitute for your relationships with your own healthcare and pharmaceutical providers. Always seek the advice of your healthcare provider before beginning any new treatment or if you have questions regarding a medical condition. All right, with that being noted, I'm pleased to introduce today's presenter, Dr. Casey McCraw. Dr. McCraw is a fellowship trained men's sexual health and prosthetic urologist. He specializes in the workup and treatment of erectile dysfunction, Peyronie's disease, and male urinary incontinence and is located in Las Vegas, Nevada. Today he's going to cover injection medication, syringe and dosing, injection techniques, support options, and then hold a live Q&A to close out the webinar. So we both, without any further ado, I'd like to kick things off by welcoming our presenter, Dr. McCraw, over to you. Hi everybody, and thank you guys for uh, joining us. Luckily, I am uh, better at penises and penile injections than I am at computers, so I appreciate everybody for sticking with us. So I think the first thing that we wanted to do is there were a few um, questions at the beginning that we just wanted to ask and see kind of where people's comfort was with it. So Austin, do you have those questions or answers in the polls? Yep, uh, so I just launched the first question here. How long have you been using injection therapy as a treatment option? Uh, so we got a few options here to help us figure out if we've um, got some new folks or some folks a little bit uh, more seasoned at injection therapy. Perfect. All right, so it looks like we had about 45% uh, answer that they have zero to five months experience, 20%, six to 11, 18, one to two years, and three plus years, 17%. Okay. So we will surprise. move on. Yep, we'll move on to our next question here. Have you ever performed an injection on yourself and not received the desired result? Yes or no here. All right, looks like we have about 80% said yes. They did perform an injection and did not have the desired result and 20% no. Perfect, okay. The last question here is, have you attended a previous MinMD Real Talk webinar? So we run our Real Talk webinars on various topics um, and we run about one a month. All right, looks like we had about 32% say yes, 68% no. Thanks for uh, joining us again, those of you who said yes, and uh, welcome to the Real Talk webinar party. All of you said no. All right, perfect, yeah, welcome guys. So, you know, with all of these, we're gonna focus this one on obviously penile injections um, and really a lot on technique of how best to do penile injections, um, as well as go through some of the accessories that we can use uh, to help with them. So I always like to start off first with just a, a brief presentation, um, somewhat focusing kind of on erectile dysfunction, because I think it's really important to know what's going on, because then we'll understand the treatment better and why we have to do the treatment a certain way. So let's get into that. And so to start, I like to talk about how a perfect erection works. So when we were 19 years old and we got, you know, erections all the time, very freely, and it annoyed us back then because we had to hide our erections. And now we wish we could go back to those days. What was happening with that perfect erection is we were getting a mental thought that was stimulating, or we were getting actual physical touch that was stimulating. That what that does is initially triggers a nerve response that goes down to our penis that tells everything relax and open up, okay? So the next thing that happens is our blood vessels relax and expand, bringing blood into the tissue. The spongy tissue that is called the corpora in our penis, and we have two of them, two cylinders running through the penis, they also relax, filling with blood that the arteries are bringing in. That starts giving us our good erection, 
And the veins, as we can see in this picture, lay on the outside of the penis. So as the penis is expanding and getting hard, it's pressing on those veins, shutting down the blood flow out, which traps the blood in, giving us a good hard erection, okay? Our erection stays in a perfect world until we're ready for it to go away. So either the thought goes away, we get distracted by something else, or you know we, we reach climax and we're done with it. Then the process reverses. Another nerve response goes down and tells everything to constrict. So blood vessels constrict, which means arterial blood is not flowing into the penis. The spongy tissue constricts, which then pulls away from the veins, allowing blood to flow out. Our erection goes away. So that is how a normal erection works in a perfect world, okay? And so there are lots of different treatments for erectile dysfunction. And in a previous talk I did, if you were there, you know, we, we went through all of them in terms of pills, vacuum erection device, injection therapy, which is a really big one in my practice. I usually will start with oral medications like Viagra Cialis, but if people fail those, you know, intracavernosal injection therapy is, is usually where people go next in my practice because people are usually really happy with it. It gives people great hard erections that last for quite a while. And basically what the medication is, it is something called Trimix, okay? Um, and you can have a Bimix as well. It is a mixture of three liquid medications or two liquid medications uh, when we're talking about Bimix that cause that max relaxation of everything in the penis that we just talked about, okay? So we inject this medicine into the penis. It helps those blood vessels relax more to bring blood in. It helps the spongy tissue relax more to fill with blood, giving us a bigger erection, shutting down those veins, trapping the blood in for longer, okay? So as we age and our body is not able to do that expansion as much, whether it's because our blood vessels are getting clogged um, you know, with plaque, whether it's because we have some scar tissue in the penis, not letting it expand, whatever the reason, this medication now helps and amplifies that relaxation to really get a lot of blood flow into the penis. All right. Um, and so whether you need a bimix or a trimix is kind of going to depend on your level of ED and, and your doctor should be able to tell that. And again, so when somebody comes to my clinic, okay, let's say we've talked already, they failed oral medications, and now they've decided that they want to try these intracavernosal injections or ICI therapy as we call it. I don't just prescribe any dose to them and say, here, do this at home. Because one, there is a technique to it. And two, we really want to make sure we get the perfect dose for the patient. And we'll talk about why a little bit later but it goes into all these different dosing concentrations. So, you know, there's a bunch of bimixes, a bunch of trimixes, and which one for you really depends on the severity of your erectile dysfunction, all right? And two, I think the mechanism that is causing it, whether it's due to diabetes and the nerves just aren't responding as well, or whether it really is due to more of a cardiovascular disease and we have really um, scarred uh, and blocked arteries, okay? And again, we'll work together to figure out which specific concentration you need and whether you need a bimix or a trimix. The needle is very, very small. That's always one of the first things that you know patients ask when you say you're going to be injecting a needle into your penis is, oh my gosh, that sounds terrible. And you're right, it doesn't sound great. However, it's a very tiny, tiny needle. Uh, and after getting the injection, I would say 99% of my patients say, oh, that was it. You know, I didn't feel a thing. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So don't let the, the needle scare you off, okay? It's very, very small. This basically is going to go into that there are different size needles and different size syringes. The biggest thing to know is that the needle is very, very small. Okay, and so starting dose. When somebody wants to do Trimix, what I do is I usually order a sample dose of medication that's sent to my clinic. And how I choose that, I always do a history and physical exam when the patient first comes to me. And I'll ask questions of, all right, what have you tried in the past? Have you tried Viagra? Have you tried Cialis? How did it work for you? Some people will say, yeah, you know, I tried Viagra and it gave me a partial erection. 
you know, some people will say, I tried Viagra and it didn't give me anything at all, not even fullness. And kind of based on that, I can gauge in my mind maybe where we need to start. So I'll order kind of that starting dose that I think for that specific patient. They come into my office and we actually do the injection with that starting dose on them, okay? And we see how it affects them. Does it give them the perfect erection, meaning a good, hard nine to 10 out of 10 erection that lasts for approximately 30 minutes to one hour and then goes away on its own? And I keep the patient in clinic for this entire time so we can really see this process work. Or do we do this injection and they only get, you know, a six out of 10 erection? All right, I need I know that when they go home, I need to increase that dose. You know, some people will get an erection that's really hard and lasts for too long, which is always very funny when I tell them that because for somebody who's not had a great erection in years, they say, give me an eight hour erection. That sounds fantastic to me. The reason why we don't want that, and you always hear, you know, on the commercials, if you have an erection that lasts longer than four hours, seek medical care, is because at that four hour mark, we need to get some new blood into the penis. And so we really don't want an erection that lasts longer than three or four hours, which is why we're really careful with this dosing, okay? Um, again, this always talks about, uh, you know, do not exceed the maximum prescribed dose with the urologist. So, you know, when we work with you, when you come to clinic, we find the right dose. You wanna really stick with that dose. You don't wanna try to overdo it again because you might end up with an erection that lasts for too long. Um, with the injections, you're allowed to inject once every 24 hours at the most. And oftentimes, you know, we'll recommend not more than three to four times a week, just so we try to prevent scar tissue in the penis from developing, okay? All right, so now let's get to the actual technique, okay? So you've come to clinic, we've done your test injection, we have a really good idea of what dose you need, um, now what happens, all right? I teach you how to do the injection in clinic so that you're comfortable with it at home. We then send off a prescription to MinMD and they ship it to your house, okay? And what they will ship you is gonna be liquid medication, all right? That comes in a bottle that looks like this, all right? They will also send you syringes that look like this and they'll send you alcohol pads there we go. All right, because I really want to make sure that you guys can see this appropriately. Okay, so again, we have the alcohol pads, and we have the needle. And I want to go over this needle. Let me get it adjusted so that you guys can really see it. All right, so the needle comes in a pretty standard dose. All right, this says 100. And let me move this light because it's glaring a little bit on this. All right, that's a little bit better. So your syringes are gonna say 100 on the bottom. That goes by units, all right? Usually we try to dose somebody around 20 to 30 units, as you see here on the top. But if somebody needs it, we can keep going up higher and higher, okay? All right, so now let's get to the actual technique of it. All right. So we have our trusty penis here, okay? So at home, you'll take your medication, you'll take your alcohol wipe, and again, you wanna wipe off the top of the bottle really well with the alcohol wipe, all right? Now we're gonna say that your doctor said that you need, let's say, 30 units of medication, all right? So you're gonna take off the cap, you're gonna pull the black plunger back till it's right around that three area. So see, I pull it back a little more, I can push it up till it's right at the three, all right? Fill it with air, okay? Next, what you're gonna do is you wanna take it and you're gonna stick it in the bottle and turn the bottle upside down. You're then gonna push that air into the bottle and then draw back on that medication nice and slowly. And you'll notice you get a little air bubble at the top. So oftentimes what I like to do, if I'm aiming for 30, is I'll pull back a little more, maybe to 40 at first, and then I push the rest of the medication with those air bubbles in until I get back to that 30 and I don't really see any more air bubbles. All right, 
see, take the needle out. All right. And then we're gonna prepare your penis. So again, with another alcohol swab, you'll get that ready. And I like to tell people, you know, with the penis, pull this down a little bit more. It's you, the places you do not want to inject. You don't want to inject directly into the head of the penis, all right? You don't want to inject directly at 12 o'clock on the back of the penis. That's where a lot of the deep nerves and blood vessels will run. And you don't want to inject at six o'clock on the bottom of the penis because that's where the urethra, the P channel runs, all right? So anywhere along the sides of the shaft are fair game for injecting, all right? And it doesn't matter if you, you know, inject up here, here, down here. Usually we'll tell people kind of to aim for the base, but really anywhere along here is just fine, okay? So you'll take the penis at home, you'll hold it on stretch to the side against one of your legs, you'll take your alcohol wipe, and you wanna wipe off the entire side of the penis. And it's very important to get it wiped off nice and clean before you do your injection, okay? So you're then gonna take your needle, all right? And you wanna go in perpendicular. And let me hold it like this so you see. You wanna go in perpendicular. The biggest mistakes I see people make, and you guys answered this question about, have you ever done an injection at home where it didn't work? I see this a lot, especially in people who are just starting to inject. The reason for that is, if this medication is just injected kind of under the skin, it's not going to work, okay? We really need to get it in deep so that it gets into those cylinders that we talked about earlier that fill with blood when you get an erection. So what I tell my patients is with the penis on stretch, you go in perpendicular, three, two, one. You want the needle all the way in and then I tell them to push a little bit more, okay? Once you're in and pushing, you take your other finger and you'll slowly inject the medication. You'll then remove the needle and you'll hold pressure for about a minute, okay? Once that minute's done, you'll release pressure and you can start getting to foreplay now. Your erection should come up in about five to 10 minutes, all right, during that foreplay. And again, I cannot emphasize enough we don't want to sky. We don't want to go up. We don't want to sky, sky down. We really want to go in perpendicular and really push deep. The only way that this needle goes in too deep is if you see it sticking outside of the other part of your penis, which I promise you is not anatomically possible. It will not happen. And so I joke by saying that so that people really feel like they can really push in deep. You cannot get too deep with that, okay? And that's usually the biggest mistake people make is they just do not get deep enough. All right. And let me forward this screen. So again, this is what we went through. We'll kind of go through it again. So you're gonna pull the plunger back to fill with air to the dose that your doctor told you to come to. You're then going to wipe off the top of the bottle with an alcohol wipe. You'll turn it over, insert the plunger. You'll insert the air in and then you'll draw it back, usually a little bit more than you eventually will want to inject to get the air out. You push it up to the dose you want to inject and you'll pull out the needle. And then again, like this is showing, we do not want to inject at 12 o'clock on the direct top of the penis. We do not want to inject at six o'clock on the direct bottom of the penis, but we can inject anywhere in between on the sides, okay? We want to pull the penis to the side alcohol wipe off that entire side, go in perpendicular, and we wanna make sure we go in deep enough that when we inject the medication, we get it into these little pink circles here called the corpora, inject it, pull out, hold pressure for about a minute, and then get to foreplay, okay? And you know, some people will ask me, it's an important thing that, well, hey doc, okay, I injected and maybe I didn't get it in deep enough or I kind of skived and I didn't get it in the corpora, can I inject again? The answer is no, because if you happen to even get a little bit of medication into the correct area, even though most of it may not have gotten in there, if you happen to inject more and hit it again, you may actually inject too much medication, causing an erection that lasts for too long. So basically at that point, you need to wait 24 hours, okay? 
So side effect mitigation, or how do we avoid some of these side effects? So again, proper injection technique, kind of like we talked about, okay? Um, you really wanna see a urologist. I, I hear about people sometimes going to different clinics outside, and I hear that, you know, hey, they didn't even go through the process with me or do an injection. They wrote me a prescription and sent me off, um, and I see more people back who have had problems with the injections who are kind of just given a script and thrown out um, than somebody who truly comes to a urologist who does this all the time, who takes the time in office to go through the steps to really do a test injection um, and see what's going on with the patient, okay? So this one that says rotate injection site. So I think that that's really important. You know, if you are injecting into the exact same area over and over and over again, there is a much higher chance that you're gonna develop scar tissue. So let me move this down again. So when we talk about rotating the needle, let's say I inject here today, and let's say in two days I wanna do it again. Well, maybe I'll move the needle up here this time. And then in a week I'm gonna inject again. Maybe I wanna move it to the other side of the penis now, okay? So just as much as you can, try to rotate it um, into different parts along those sides of the shaft, all right? Storage. This medication, once punctured, has to be in the refrigerator, okay? Um, and it's very important because it will lose its potency if it warms up to a certain point. I have some people that talk about traveling, um, oftentimes from Men and B, you know, you can get this handy travel case that actually comes with uh, a refrigerated pack in it that can be very helpful for keeping it cool um, on, on traveling if you're flying by plane um, or doing a car trip. I also have had patients um, buy kind of little metal canisters that they can um, keep cold as well, specifically for traveling with medication that has to be cold. So there are different options out there um, if you're somebody who likes to travel and do all that stuff, okay? And beyond use state. So, uh, you know, on the package, it basically says that the vials are safe to use up to 28 days after puncture. Um, and that's just based on uh, what the company says. All right, so accessories. We talked about the insole tote. The other thing on here that I really wanna talk about is an auto injector, all right? So I have uh, a lot of patients who, you know, they get nervous. They're able to fill the, the needle and stuff, but when it comes to actually putting a needle in, you know, they're shaky or they're really nervous about it. So the auto injector can be really helpful with that. And I'm gonna go through that right now. All right, so the auto injector looks like this, and it comes with different pieces that go on the end here, okay? It comes with one that says uh, inject ease 50, basically, and an inject ease 100, and I think there's an inject ease 25 as well. Basically, you'll be deciding between the 100 and the 50, and that's talking about the number of units in your syringe. So since it's a 100 unit syringe, um, you know, you would think you can use the 100 unit adapter. Um, and we'll go through why I actually think the 50 unit adapter is gonna be better, okay? So what you do is you'll get your auto injector, all right? And you wanna pull this back to unlock it, all right? With your needle capped, you're gonna put your needle all the way through, all right? You then push that little bar back forward to lock it, all right? And you're gonna pull this whole thing up to cock it, all right? You'll take the needle cap off and pull it up to cock it, okay? So after you've done your alcohol wipes on the skin, you'll take your auto injector, you'll put it on the side, and you kind of want to rotate it to desensitize the area, all right? So it's cocked now, so you'll, this little button here that's on the side, you push it, it sends the needle into the penis, and then with your other hand, you push and deploy the plunger, all right? So now let's go through why I think the 50 is better than the 100. So when that deploys, and I hope you guys can see this well, that needle is sticking out nice and far there. And remember, that's important. We want this needle to go deep, okay? 
if we were to use the 100 unit on here, when you deploy that needle, there's not very much sticking out. So again, I'll have a lot of people who use the auto injector who will say, I'm injecting it with the auto injector in the right place and I'm really not getting good results. A lot of the time it's because they're using the 100 unit piece that goes on it and the needle is not allowed to get deep enough. So again, switch it to the 50 unit piece and that needle will be able to go in deeper. Okay. And the other accessory here is a sharps container, um, which you can get. You know, you don't really want to throw these needles into a normal trash can, and mainly that's for safety. If if you know you're taking the trash out, the needle pokes through, it can puncture you or somebody else. So it's nice to get one of these sharps containers that you can put your used syringes in, and that will protect it from sticking to people, and then you can empty it more easily. And so for more information, again, you can visit the MinMD portal um, or you can call. MinMD is a great company and that's one of the reasons why I really like working with them because there's a lot of support. So not only does the pharmacist check with people to see, hey, is the dosing working for you along with the urologist, but there are a lot of case managers and case workers that can answer kind of these questions. You know, if you say, hey, I'm injecting and I'm not really getting consistent results, maybe what troubleshooting things should I do? So you're, you can always call your urologist and ask, but um, if your urologist is not getting back to you quick enough, or you just it's easier to reach MinMD, you can certainly call them too, um, and they're always very helpful with that. So now let's answer questions. If you guys have any questions, any personal questions, troubleshooting, I am happy to answer them for you. So good. Um, we did get a lot of questions uh, asked during the registration process. Um, so we'll be going through those now. And we also got a bunch of questions uh, during the event. So we have plenty to fill up the rest of our time. Perfect. All right. So first question here. I've noticed that the bimix I use works more effectively when I inject on the left side of my penis, uh, not the right. Any reason why? So, you know, the, the corpora, those spongy body cylinders that are in the penis, they are fenestrated. So technically they talk to each other at different points, which is often why you can inject on one side and both sides will fill up with blood. The reason why it works better on one side than the other, some possible reasons. This doesn't mean this is the reason for you, but it could be one that you are just more comfortable or better at injecting into one side than the other. And so you're able to get that needle kind of deeper and get the full amount of the medication into that cylinder on that side better on one than the other. For me, I usually, when I'm injecting patients, pull the penis over so I can inject with my right hand because I'm right-handed. That's just easier for me. Um, but it could just be that you're more comfortable on the left. The other reason is your left side may have a little bit of scar tissue on there. So you know, the needle going in, it may be more difficult for it to go in or the medication may not be able to distribute quite as well on that side. But that's a good thing that you that you kind of realize that so you can tailor maybe your injections to the left side. Again, with these injections, a lot of it is figuring out how you can do it in your body comfortably and successfully each time. And for every single patient, that's gonna be different because we're all built differently. So that's a great example that it's important to try some different things within the realm you know, that is safe and find exactly what works the best for you. All right, uh, next question here is about the on use date. Um, just scroll past it in two seconds. I've used Biomix two to three months after the beyond use date. As long as it's effective, is there any other reason why I should not use it? So, you know, technically I have to tell you um, that, you know, based on what the company has found not to use it beyond that time. So when the medicine gets older, what will happen is the actual active ingredients will do something called denature, where um, the proteins kind of start breaking down so they're not as effective. So your bimix may not work as well or trimix may not work as well, you know, 30 days, 40 days later as it will within those first 28 days. So that's one reason is that, you know, MinMD can guarantee that your medicine will work 
effectively and the same for those first 28 days. After that, it it's, doesn't mean necessarily that it's like food poisoning, like it goes bad and will make you extremely sick, but the medicine will be much less effective. The other reason is because, you know, when that tube is punctured, especially multiple times, it will increase the risk that that seal will not withstand as well and potentially you could get bacteria getting in there. Um, and so you're right. It doesn't mean that, you know, at 28 days, your medicine's not going to work or if you inject it become sick, but the medicine will lose its efficacy and the safety of that seal will start to decrease over time. And that's why they have that 28 day rule. All right, before we get to the next question, um, do you actually mind stopping sharing your screen? We'll go full webcam uh, for the rest of the Q&A session. Okay. Perfect. All right, here's the next question. Uh, should there be pain after injecting? I've been experiencing pain. What can I do to eliminate it? Yep, and so so that's a very good question. And um, so, I wish I could ask you directly, but um, my first question would be, are you using Bimex or Trimex? In the Trimex, there is an ingredient called alprostadil, or PGE1 is sometimes how it's abbreviated. That medication in about 30% of people can actually cause penile soreness. It's not dangerous. It's, it's not like it's hurting because something's going wrong in your penis. It just can cause penile soreness, like I said, in 30% of people. So the first question is, if you're using Trimix, it could be that alprostadil component is you're just somebody who is sensitive to that. If that's the case, one way to try to alleviate it would be to try a Bimix. And um, depending on what dose you're on, we can oftentimes get a Bimix pretty darn close to Trimix to try to help give you still a great erection without maybe that soreness. The other thing I would, I would ask is, does it hurt every time? Or is it just sometimes, because sometimes, you know, if, if it injected um, not in the correct space, it can also cause some soreness and bruising. I would venture that you're injecting it correctly and it's causing soreness each time. And that's probably more due to that alprostadil component. So I would check with your urologist to see, hey, can we try, you know, maybe a stronger bimix um, that may still get me a great erection without causing this soreness. All right, got two questions here about dosage. Uh, what is the maximum safe dosage? And another question is, if your erection lasts too long on your current dose, is it okay to reduce the dosage? Yes, so you know, the first question, the maximum that you can inject that's safe, it is all dependent on your erectile function. Again, we're trying to aim for a dose that gives us a good heart erection, that lasts around 30 minutes to an hour, okay? That four hour mark is kind of the danger zone that we talked about earlier. So we do not want an erection that lasts four hours or, or even kind of close to four hours, okay? Um, because the penile blood in there is trapped and it will run out of oxygen, okay? Without becoming flaccid and being recycled. So you technically can inject a full syringe of the strongest medicine if, that gets you a good erection that only lasts 30 minutes to an hour. And that's something, again, that you work out with your urologist. So there's not like you can only inject, you know, 40 units of this one. Otherwise, anything above that, you know, will, will make your penis explode or will make you sick or anything like that. It's just all in the fact that we don't want too much medicine to cause an erection that lasts for too long. So. I hope that someone answers the question that it, it really all depends on the erectile function. Um, and the, can you read the second part of the question again, Austin? Uh, yes. Uh, so the second part of the question after the maximum safe dosage was, if you have a good erection and it's lasting too long, is it okay to lower your dosage? Yes, so absolutely. You know, I would, one, contact your urologist and just say, hey, this is what this dose is causing. But yeah, let's say that initially, you know, you were injecting 40 units of, you know, one of the trimexes and it was giving you an erection that lasted an hour and you were happy with that. And let's say now maybe it's lasting two hours at that same dose. 
or you just don't want an erection that lasts for an hour. You say, hey, at 30 minutes, I'm done with it. It needs to go away so I can go watch TV. So yeah, what you would do is try to titrate down the volume first. So instead of injecting 40 units, maybe try injecting 30 units. That may bring that erection time back down, okay? The other thing that you could think about doing is, again, if you've tried decreasing the volume and it's still lasting too long, is, is talk with your urologist or one of the pharmacists at MinMD to try to decrease the strength of the medicine is another option. Uh, and you know, I see that question or that happen in my patients who have had prostate cancer um, and had a, a radical prostatectomy the most because they have their surgery, it immediately causes severe erectile dysfunction, um, and oftentimes the nerves will heal over time. So if we start them on a medication three months after their surgery, by six months, those nerves may have healed more and they may really need to decrease the dose you know, of their injection medication um, because they just don't need as strong of a dose now that the nerves are getting better. So that's a good question. All right, uh, next question here is, can you split up the injections, say 20 units on the left side, 20 units on the right side? Do you advise to do that? So you can, again, it should not make a difference because of those communicating channels with throughout the penis, okay? So you should just be able to inject 40 units on one side and it communicates with the whole penis. Um, I do have a few patients who just think they get a better erection by injecting half and half into each side. And that may be due to, you know, if they have some abnormal scarring right through the middle of their penis. Um, the only thing that that will increase is the risk of scar tissue development because every single stick is gonna somewhat increase risk of scar tissue development. So if you're doubling the amount of sticks you're doing every time, that risk will go up. And that's really the only risk that you're looking at with that. All right, I uh, got a question about medication combinations. Uh, so this person asked, tell us about the advisability of mixing medications. That is, for example, Cialis in the morning and then an injection later that day in the evening. So I think that that is, is somewhat tricky and that is something that you need to work with your urologist with. Um, we always advise not combining the oral medications like Viagra or Cialis with the injections because they can compound on each other and again, cause an erection that lasts too long especially with Cialis because it stays in your system longer. Um, I think if you work with your urologist, let's say you take Cialis for like a BPH medication, or if you, know, if, if you can only inject once a day, you say, well, if I inject at night, it works. If I take a Cialis in the morning, I get an, a, another erection. I, again, I would caution that, and I would say work with your urologist on that because it can be done. It just needs to be watched and it needs to be done in a safe way to make sure that you're not getting an erection that lasts for too long. If you work with your urologist and your erection with the injection doesn't last four hours and you take a Cialis separately at a separate time and again your erection goes away and does not last four hours and you know then technically yes that is safe but I would say do not try that at home without discussing it with your urologist first. All right, next question here. Can you discuss the use of Zyaplex and Verapamil for Peyronie's disease? Yes, so you know that's, that's a different type of injection um, than this that we're using. However, in somebody with Peyronie's disease, which is penile curvature that can develop during life, um, there is a medicine called Zyaflex, which is something called a collagenase it breaks down collagen tissue, which is what that scar tissue is made of that's causing your penile curvature, okay? Um, and I actually use the Trimix injections when I'm working somebody up for that because I need to see that curvature myself in clinic so I can document it for insurance purposes to try to get the Zyaflex approved. So we'll do a Trimix injection in clinic. It gives the patient an erection. I can see that curvature, and then we can talk about Zyaflex. Uh, and again, Zyaflex, it's an injection that's different than Trimix or Bimix, all right? It breaks down scar tissue, but a series of injections, we do about eight of those with the Zyaflex into the actual scar tissue. And in about 60 to 70% of men, it will help to straighten that curvature out 
over time. And so again, yeah, if you're somebody who has um, Peyronie disease and penile curvature um, and are interested in that, that's something to discuss with your urologist because they certainly can get you worked up and possibly treated for that. All right, next question here. Before I started with injections, my penis was always hiding like a turtle going into its shell. After injections, my penis seems to be of a normal length most of the time. Is that normal? Is there a problem with that? No, it is. I think that that's a fantastic thing. You know, um, again, a lot of people when they get older will complain of losing penile length. So they'll say, man, yeah, when I was 18, I had seven inches or six inches and, you know, my penis is, has shrunk over time. And um, especially now, you know, it's hard when I pee to kind of get it out. And so the reason for that, if you are not getting consistent erections, you're not getting great blood flow into the erectile tissue of the penis, and you're not keeping that stretch on the penis. It's those consistent erections that hold our penile length over time. And so if we're not getting consistent erections, our penis will shrink over time, okay? So doing the injections on a regular basis, getting good blood flow to that penis, getting stretch on that penis, it really will, one, stop length loss, potentially regain a little bit of length, um, and definitely stop it from what we call turtling, um, you know, in when you're not erect. So yeah, it's a very good thing. There's nothing wrong with that. It actually means that your penis is, is getting better blood flow and the tissue down there is healthier. All right, got an interesting question here. What happens when you have an erection that lasts eight hours before seeing a doctor? How long can you go before causing permanent damage? So that's a good question that we've been talking about. So again, four hours is that magical number um, that we've been talking about. And, it, and the reason for four hours is not a random number. It is that at four hours, the blood that's in your penis, because it gets trapped in, it, go, it flows in and then it gets trapped. It's not constantly circulating. It goes in and gets trapped. So at four hours, that blood that's trapped in your penis causing the erection is running out of oxygen. So when, when your penile tissue runs out of oxygen because there's no oxygen in that blood, it starts to get hurt. And what that can cause is worsening erectile dysfunction. It can cause scar tissue in your penis. Um, it can act, cause Peyronie's disease, penile curvature potentially. It can cause a lot of things. So that's why, again, with the dosing, we're really careful not to cause an erection that lasts eight hours. If your erection is lasting three hours, getting close to four, go to the emergency room. Or if it's during the day, call your urologist to get in to see them because it's much easier, one, to reverse an erection the quicker you get to it. But two, it really will save and preserve the penile tissue in your erectile function. Once you get past four hours, it's difficult to say when permanent damage happens. We know that damage will start happening after four hours, but whether it'll be permanent or not is not necessarily the case. We can say that the longer it goes on, the more likelihood that you're running that you will get that permanent damage. And, and so that's why I cannot stress enough, an erection that's approaching four hours, you need to go to the ER or call your urologist during the day. All right, uh, next question here. Will Biomix work if I am on Luprin for horm hormone therapy? So yeah, it might. Biomix or Trimix could still work because really, you know, Lupron, what it does is it's a medicine that takes away somebody's testosterone. Um, it's often used uh, during prostate cancer because testosterone is food for prostate cancer. So to try to starve the cancer, will give somebody Lupron to decrease their testosterone. A lot of guys think that my testosterone is 100% linked to my erection. So if I have low testosterone, I won't get erection. What's actually been found in the literature is testosterone is somewhat linked to erections, more so with night, with kind of the morning erections or erections while you're sleeping, not necessarily to a sexual erection. Testosterone is tied to sexual desire, the feeling of I really feel sexy, I wanna have sex, but it's not as strongly tied to actual erectile function. So yes, even though you're on Lupron, I would say definitely try a Bimix or a Trimix um, because it may work great for you. All right, next question here. Is it normal to get bruising in the injection area? How can I get less bruising in the future? Mm -hmm. Yep, so absolutely, you can get bruising in the injection area. And I would say the two things 
to try and prevent that. One is going to be uh, to make sure you try to avoid those superficial veins on the penis. You know, we see that sometimes men in their penis um, will have veins kind of running right along the skin. So try to inject, you know, in between them. If you, if you get hit one of those veins, it's not a big deal, again, but it can cause more bruising. The other thing you wanna do is again, when you take out that needle, you wanna make sure you're holding pressure for about a minute. Because if you just inject and take it out, you're gonna get a little bit of oozing and therefore bruising under the skin from that. But if you hold pressure immediately after taking that needle out for about a minute, you'll get much less of that. So I would say try those two techniques which should help reduce the amount of bruising that you have. All right, next question here. What exactly does diabetes do that causes ED? Seems that I have lost sensation in the head. Can anything bring back some of the sensation? So that's a good question. You know, diabetes is, is one of the worst ones probably for ED because it can affect so many different areas. So one thing that it hits are gonna be the nerves that help start an erection, all right? Um, and so in some of my guys, that's the only place that the diabetes has, has kind of taken out and so injections work super well in them because they will bypass that. Um, diabetes though can also cause scarring of those again spongy cylinders in the penis that need to fill with blood so it makes it a lot more difficult for those cylinders to expand and fill with blood. Um, diabetes will also I think as a lot of people who have diabetes know it can affect nerves of sensation so some people will lose sensation in their fingers some people will lose sensation in their toes that sometimes is difficult to get back. Um, certainly, it may not be permanent. In some people, it happens um, initially, but if they work really hard to get their blood sugar under control and keep it really tightly controlled on a daily basis, will regain some of that feeling back. Um, so I would say work, work really hard with your primary care doctor um, or your endocrinologist to just make sure your diabetes is as tightly controlled as possible. Um, to try to regain that function. And again, getting consistent blood flow into the penis will also help to try to get that sensation back. All right, got a question here about vacuum devices. Any advantage to using a vacuum pump in between injections to help out the penis health? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think that there's not 100% specific literature on that specific question, but I think that vacuum erection devices in between injections absolutely can, can be very helpful. They will get blood into the penis um, without doing an injection, you know? So if you say, well, I only inject, you know, twice a week because that's when I really use it for sex. Yeah, using a vacuum erection device just to get, you know, blood in, get the penis stretched somewhat, um, the other times is great because one, it's gonna keep that tissue healthy because you're getting blood in. And two, it's going to not only maintain again your penile length, but a vacuum erection device uh, used on a consistent basis is one of the things that has actually been shown to help people sometimes regain some lost length over time if they do it consistently enough. So I'm a big fan of vacuum erection devices. I would say just you know, follow the manufacturer protocol when you do it to make sure you know, you don't um, do too much to the penis because it can cause some bruising uh, as well. All right, uh, so we had a few questions come in recently uh, since you talked about it, about priapism. Um, they wanna know what you can do at home to remedy priapism. Can you use Sudafed? Yes, yes, so yes. I would, when you start penile injections, I would talk to your primary care doctor because what Sudafed can do is some people who have high blood pressure, it can raise it a little bit. So you wanna just check with your primary care doctor at the start when you're about to start injections to make sure, hey, in this situation, is it okay if I take a Sudafed? Most of the times they'll say yes. Even people with high blood pressure, as long as it's not super high, a Sudafed is fine. So that's the first thing to try if you've had that cleared by your primary doctor is yes. Try a Sudafed because what Sudafed will do, how it stops our nose from running is it constricts some blood vessels in our nose. Well, same thing in the penis. It will kind of constrict some of the blood vessels in the penis, hopefully shutting down that erection. All right. The other thing, some people find it helpful to kind of walk around 
um, and, and exercise can also try to help get that erection down. Again, if you've tried some of these more conservative things, you're approaching you know, four hours, it's time to go to the ER though if they haven't worked. And you know, one more, one more thing on that that I wanna say, Men MD will also has the option to get one of the antidotes sent to the patient's house, all right? It's called phenylephrine, and it is another liquid medication that you inject into the penis that is almost like a super Sudafed that acts locally. So it will help shut down blood vessels in the penis, help constrict some of that spongy tissue to try to shut down the erections. When you come to the office or to the ER, that's kind of the first thing we inject. I will say, if you want to do that, you need to work with your urologist with it because you need to make sure, again, on the dosing and the technique for doing that. But there are some people who, you know, get kind of priapisms on a more regular basis, and your urologist can certainly prescribe through MinMD that antidote for you to have at home so that if that happens, you can inject that and, and hopefully not have to go to the ER. All right, uh, next question here. How hard is hard enough? What type of hardness can I expect from injecting? I've started at 30 units up to 40 units and no erections so far, uh, capable of penetration. What do you suggest? So, yep, and that word penetration right there is how we describe what's hard enough. When you say, my erection is hard enough for penetration, then that's a good hard erection, all right? And usually if we are talking about a scale of one to 10, usually you can achieve penetration with like an eight through 10 erection. So that's usually what we'll aim for. If you've done 30 and 40 units and are not getting an erection, then I recommend um, you know, calling your urologist and making an appointment because one, it could be that it's just not getting in the right place. So if they did an injection in the office with 30 units and you got a great erection in the office, but are using 30 or 40 units at home and not getting anything, most likely it's just because it's not getting, again, in the correct location inside the penis. If um, you know you, you went to a place and they kind of just wrote you a script and said, here, try this at home, and you've tried 30 units, 40 units, and it's not working, it may be that the medication is not strong enough. So again, you may need to get with them and they may need to up the dose. Um, but I certainly would call them and say, hey, this is not working um, so that they can help you troubleshoot that because we want you to be getting great erections with this. All right, next question here. And we're uh, getting close to the end of the event. Uh, so we'll ask a few more and then we'll wrap it up. Um, but next question here is, what do you think about P-shots and Gaines Wave treatment as um, suitable options for treatment? Yep. So that's a very good question. and and. I kind of like to do a little history um, whenever I get asked this question. So, uh, you know, back in the day, I would say for the past 40, 50 years, we've had, um, you know, penile implants, and then we had um, injection therapy. Next came the Viagra's Cialis and all of that stuff. And what is kind of the common theme with them is that they put a Band-Aid to an extent on a disease process, meaning, injections, Viagra, Cialis, um, penile implants, they don't help your body heal what is causing the erectile dysfunction. They just help force an erection, all, even though you have something going on that's causing erectile dysfunction. So in the past two to five years, some of these new therapies kind of have been mentioned at all of the sexual medicine meetings, the European sexual medicine meeting, um, about taking the disease state, taking erectile dysfunction, whether it's caused by blocked blood vessels or scarred spongy tissue, and trying to force the body into healing those blood vessels and healing that sponge t tissue so that you're able to get a better quality erection on your own, possibly without you know, pills or injections. And for most people, the research is showing that it only will move you back really one step. So potentially, if you are somebody who gets a great erection using Viagra now, it may take you to where you don't need Viagra anymore and can still get a great erection. Or people who need, you know, Trimix right now, it may take you back to where now Viagra works again. All right, so it may take you back one level. With the research, um, kind of the PRP, which for people who may not know that stands for plasma rich protein. And it's where they take some blood from you, they spin your blood down, and they get 
kind of the liquid yellowy component. They take away all the red blood cells. And the liquid yellowy component is thought to have uh, more enzymes and stem cells that may actually um, cause your body to start healing, all right? So they take that and they inject it back into the penis. I will say that that has shown marginal results in people uh, in their penis. The reason we started trying it in the penis is because orthopedics use it in joints and it seems to work better. But a joint is a closed space, whereas a penis can drain right off. And so that's somewhat of the thought is that it goes out of the penis too quickly and maybe that's why we're not seeing as much effectiveness as they see in orthopedics. The, the low intensity shock wave, gains wave type stuff, that has actually shown better um, efficacy in the human studies, all right? Um, and some people, it helps a lot. They do great with it. I have patients who absolutely love it. It says it really fixed their erectile dysfunction. I have other patients who it doesn't work at all in. And that's the key factor right now is that all of these technologies are still experimental. So I cannot take two patients who have erectile dysfunction and say, I know it will work in this one and I know it will not work in this one based on this one has diabetes or high blood pressure. That's what we don't know yet is who they will work in and who they won't. The problem with that is that they're all really expensive and insurance doesn't pay for them. So you have to pay cash to get these therapies. And so if I can't tell if it's gonna work in you or not, it's somewhat of a gamble. You know, you may pay all this money and it works fantastically. You may pay all this money and it doesn't work at all. So that's kind of the caveat. My overall point is I think these technologies are very exciting. Um, because it's kind of a new frontier in treating erectile dysfunction. Um, but I will say, don't let somebody promise you the world. Don't let somebody tell you this is going to absolutely work 100% because right now they don't know. You know, They hope it works. It may work great, but we're still in the experimental phase of all of this. Exciting where it's going, but still in the experimental phase. All right. Uh, next question here. How do you feel about intrauretral gel? Is it better the same as injection therapy? Yep. So, um, you know, I think that in my practice, I probably use it less than injection therapy, but it's definitely a viable option. Uh, and so for those of you out there who kind of don't know what it is, it is a gel that goes down the urethra, the P channel, okay, right here on the tip. So it basically comes with a little applicator that you stick in the urethra and you squeeze, the gel gets deposited in the, the urethra, the P channel, you kind of rub the penis and the gel gets absorbed from the inside, all right? It is one of the components that is in the trimix mixture just in gel form, all right? So I would say it's not quite as effective as the injections for most people. Usually injections are stronger, but for somebody maybe who, who can get away with more of a bimix or a lower level trimix, it actually might work well for you. Uh, the other thing is sometimes it can cause, again, that penile soreness in people because it is that alprosadil component. So I have a handful of people that use it. I have some that really like it. I have others that say, well, it causes some penile soreness and it doesn't work quite as well. So they end up going to the injections. But I certainly think it's something of a viable option for people to try, especially if you really don't like needles or, or really want to try something else before going to the injections. All right, last question here. Uh, the injection is cold. Is there a way to warm it up before injecting? Um, you know, there's not a great way, again, because you, you don't want to warm it up too much. I would say, you know, once it's in the syringe, if you kind of hold it in your palms, the hold the syringe in your palms to um, try to make it, you know, a little bit warmer before you put it in, that's not going to be a big deal. Um, it won't cause it to be denatured, but you certainly don't want to really heat it up in any way, shape, or form. So I would say once it's in the syringe, you know, hold it between your palms, let it warm up a little bit, uh, and then once it's a little bit closer to body temperature, you can inject it. All right, thanks for that. And with that, uh, I'd like to thank Dr. McCraw for taking the time to present today, and we'd also like to thank everyone listening in for attending this Real Talk webinar. Uh, we hope it was informative and you'll join us again in the future. If you'd like to learn more about injection therapy, you have a few options here. Uh, as I mentioned in the introduction, we've attached the injection therapy guide to this event. If you'd like, you may download the PDF for your reference later. Again, that's going to be in the handout tab. Uh, there are also more resources in the resource center on minmd.com. You can visit this page to view instructional videos, guides, expert articles, and much more. 
Uh, you can also call MinMD at 857-233-5837 or log in to our password protected secure MinMD portal and you can schedule an appointment with one of our MinMD clinical case managers there. If you're interested in injection accessories, you can learn more or purchase accessories on the shop page in the MinMD portal. We'll also be sending a follow-up email with references to helpful resources and links to each after the event. So with that, I'd like to thank everyone again for attending today's webinar, and we will see you at the next one. Thanks, guys.